Hello, so off we go. Uh, rather than making a really slick video where everything goes well and there are no mistakes, I thought I should be true and uh, actually show where everything is going wrong because um, I'm pretty new to this anyway and I basically don't really know what I'm doing. You'll see me doing lots of things and then undoing what I'm doing and then redoing it again. You just see me making the uh, the armature, sort of the skeleton of the thing. And here I am preparing the clay. So I'm using Fimo for this part just to get a, a base for the model. Squishing it on, getting it into a rough kind of shape that we're going to build on afterwards. Here I am trying to smooth it out as best as I can. Not particularly doing a very good job of it, but um, you know, it's just the start. Into the oven, out it comes. And then we start with the next layer. Um, for this one, I'm using the Super Sculpey Original. Um, just wanted to try it, and it was pretty cheap at the time, so I thought I'd give it a go. So you'll see a lot of the time me trying to smooth out these wrinkles this smoothing and things, you'll, you'll see it quite a lot and then you'll see me putting wrinkles back in again it's all fairly time consuming and a waste of time a lot of it but um, you know, we'll see so I've put the legs on and here I am building up little boots we start with the top edge just blending it in a little bit until it just looks like a whole boot but rather than doing a full piece all the way down just start with the top and blend it in so it's not too heavy here I'm putting the shoe on blending it all in again getting it nicely fixed in place getting it looking good and then realizing that it's way too big so whew, there it goes off with the toes and make it a little bit more like a boot again here we're just adding a bit more detail I put some wrinkles in those toes and put the sole on so here is another one of those examples of me adding the wrinkles after smoothing it all out again and I thought he needed a kneecap as well for some reason um, so I've added that on as well and blended that in just to give it a little bit more point this is a professor or scientist and he's wearing a lab coat an old school Howie lab coat I discovered recently by doing some Google searching and uh, it's the one that buttons all the way up the front and the side um, so after putting that bit on I sort of thought no this isn't the right way to do it because it needs to fasten at the front but I wrapped it all around and finished it at the front because that is just the obvious thing to do we do that cut out there oh look at the size of that knife that's just such a very very big blade So a bit more smoothing, blending it all in, and there you go. Look, it looks like a full coat. This is the the rest of the front part of the coat. Look at that. That's more sensible sized knife. You can't really do half as much damage. Yeah, makes you a bit nervous though. Still, smooth, smooth, smooth. Blending it all in again. A couple of wrinkles because he's sort of hunched over. And so we need to make his coat look a little bit baggy where he's bending over. Smoothing those in. Using all sorts of tools just because they're there when I probably could have done it all with my fingers really. Oh, some more creases. 
we've got the neck on now because I realized afterwards that I needed to put the neck on before I put his collar on. So there is his collar. That's the second time. I didn't show the one where I put it on first time and then took it off again. So I'm just blending that down so that it sticks. And speaking of sticking, let's get some of that adhesive on there. Because we're going to add some little buttons. So these are just circles or possibly even just spherical blobs of clay which I squished down with the ball stylus using a smaller ball stylus there to add some detail in the pocket now this is completely something that didn't need to be done but I, I just wanted to do it so I put a few pens in a top pocket a whole lot of work lots of detail it kind of worked and a whole lot of painting but that comes later a bit more stitching detail going on there you'd never believe I was a professional photographer would you that's why I don't do video so there it is a little bit better shot of all those details arm time I'm bending them into place and then cutting them short and then realizing the arms aren't the right way, so I made them a bit shorter again. Putting more sticky stuff on there, so when I add the clay it doesn't fall off so easily. So nice and skinny arms. Now these are the hands decided that he was going to wear a glove on one hand because he's you know he's hand handling dangerous stuff this one's the slightly less detailed gloved hand putting a lot of effort into something that's not actually going to get seen because he's holding a cylinder After the hand's been attached, I'm going to add the end of his sleeve. So just a little strip of clay blended in. But I say it's going to be a glove, so this is the other end. A little bit like we did the boots. You're just putting the end bit on and blending the middle part in. I should have mentioned that uh, you notice that they're grey because this is cos clay rather than the Sculpey and Cosclay when it's cured it's still a bit flexible so it's good for all those sort of long uh, fingers and hair that's sticking out a bit because it's not brittle and with me being so clumsy that comes in really handy same thing on this side with the cuff added a bit more detail on those hands with some knuckles and a bit of bit veins on the back his head there we go a nice big smile and some big old teeth There I've added some lips as we're building up the face. And here we are giving a bit more cheek. The eyeballs are in. This is one way of doing it. Other people use separate bits of clay for the, the eyebrows 
not the eyebrows, eyelids, that's the thing. Um, whereas I just squished them around a little bit with the tool and just pushed them back. Uh, two reasons for this. Firstly, I wanted him to have nice bulgy eyes because he's got that crazy look about him. And secondly, I'm lazy and it was an easy way to do it. Here we are adding some eyebrows to him. So building that up and then giving some texture for the eyebrows. And a little bit more detail in the eyes and some some lines in his brow as well. Because, you know, he's a bit of an old guy. Oh, witchy nose. Use a bit of wire in this just to um, give it a bit of support before I fixed it onto his face. Added a bit more line into his cheeks and face and some nostrils, of course. On with the ears. Um, best not look too closely at those because I'm not a true medical professional and they may not be anatomically correct. Bit more texture on his chin. And some on his head as well. And there are the eyebrows going on. A little bit more line on there. You have to trust me on that one, the out of focus picture. And there he is. Look at him. Onto the hair. Now he's going to have a, some crazy hair going on. Now this is the cosplay like I used on the hands. So this is great because you can use it just like the other clay. But once you've baked it, it doesn't go super, super hard. So all those little bits that are sticking out won't break off if you accidentally catch it with something. Oh, the goggles. So I wanted him to wear some safety goggles, some old style safety goggles that look a little bit like the old um, aviator flying goggles. But I didn't have any glass, so I wanted to make the glass inside some pre-baked cylinders and then the cylinders would fit inside this frame that I'm making now. But the trouble was I just could not get it to look very good. It just looks a bit wonky and I wasn't happy with it. But yeah, that was the plan. Cylinders go in there, all fits together nicely and hey presto. So these are the, uh, the lenses that I'm making using UV resin. So you put the resin in, give it a blast with some UV light and it cures and you have glass sort of thing. But I didn't know if you could put it in the oven, so I wanted to do it separately and it looked rubbish. So we tried again. Putting the, the base of the goggles on first, so that all the sort of straps and the little support bit in the middle that would go over his nose. I'm going to put, fit that onto the, uh, the head, get it all baked on, and then we're going to fit those on after it's all baked. And here we are gluing some little metal brackets onto it that's going to slide over those, those straps once it's all finished. There we go, it's super glue that, Daryl. Use a tool so you don't get it all of your hands. So here we are. We've got a bit of paint going on. <gasps> and then I dropped the paint all over the place. So I had to um, spend a good five or ten minutes clearing it up off everything. It does look like I've been uh, at it with my craft knife again. But once that was done, we're on with the painting properly. So a nice paste looking white with a bit of pink in there. Uh, that's just like the base color. Now here I am cutting off those straps because I decided I didn't like them. 
more of that in a moment. So I'm going to paint it first because once we put the goggles on, I will be able to paint underneath his head. So the head got painted first of all. His trousers and his boots are getting done back on the base so I don't have to hold it. Now these goggles, you see I've done them black already. Bit of blue tack over the lenses because my wobbly fingers, look at the state of that, would um, no doubt be all over the glass. So I put that on there to protect it. On to number three of these goggles. So these straps are going to hook over the, the brackets. That's the big plan anyway. So I paint them all and then they're going to stick on top of everything else. Nice, easy gauntlet to paint black. So that's the first part. I'm going in with a bit more detail now on a darker pink into all those recessed areas. It's a bit of a wash this, so it's got a bit of, bit of water in there in the paint, so it seeps in and then I just wipe it off a little bit. Now here, <laughs> those pens and pencil. Almost did it without messing it up. And I wanted to paint the white not quite white, so it's got a bit of bluey grey in there, which you can't quite see. Um, so not pristine white like the clay was. And a kind of mid grey for his hair, which we'll go over later with some dark low lights and lighter highlights. Dry brushing. You can't really see it in this, but um, it's a lighter colour going on just to catch all the ridges. You can see it a bit better on his trousers. So here we go. So this is the uh, the goggles going on. More super glue. And there we go. The straps go on. And it looks like they're actually attached. Mm, I need to see a doctor about that, but um, wanted to get a little bit of colour going on around the around the teeth and gum area. But this is just to get into the crevices, and then it mostly gets wiped off. I'll go over that with a an off white later on, just to get his teeth coloured in. Now see some of that dry brushing again, I think. So his eyes needed a bit of whitening after all the uh, the other darkening that I've done. <laughs> One dot. Two dots. Leave it at that. Fine. And I wanted to give him a bit of crazy looking eyes. So his, his work ha works hard, this guy. Up all night, doing experiments, and uh, he's got a bit of a bloodshot eyes going on. Getting that base done. Again, dark base coat and some dry brushing on the edges just to give it a bit of interest. And his measuring cylinder with some uh, some three D paint that I found in a cupboard. Bit more detail going on there, more dry brushing on the edges and some eye drops. Some more UV resin, give his eyes a little bit of a shine. I'll spread that about a bit. Now I also do the other eye and then give it a blast with the UV light to harden it off. Lastly, Measuring cylinder in place, and he's done.
Oh, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I will be making more. But if you uh, click on the subscribe, you'll find out when I get the next one on. Thanks for now.